How you doing, Flus? Good, Mike. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, over the years, you've talked about kind of your approach to your defense and being aggressive, playing through the whistle and everything. As a coordinator, why do you think players enjoy playing in this style of defense in your eyes? Yeah, I would say that when players come into the system and they understand the standards of which we set of how to play, I think they appreciate that because, you know, we, you know, Chris Ballard and the scouting staff, we as a group really look for that on college tape and when we uh, acquire free agents that do they play hard. And those guys appreciate, you know, when guys play hard and do it the right way. So if we are holding everybody to the same standard, then it's a collective group effort that we're all doing that together. And I think the players appreciate that, that the coaches, the head coach, uh, the GM, the ownership all want to see that on tape and we're all held, hold, you know, held to that standard together. And it kind of relieves them just to play, go out and play and play free. And if you ask Darius or Buckner or, or Kari or all the guys that play super hard for us, uh, that's what they'll tell you. They'll tell you it allows us just to play the game of football. And then the, the follow up on that, um, what have you seen out of, out of Quiddy so far? I mean, you know, people, uh, you know how this game works. People look and say, oh, he had a, when he had 11 and a half sacks in his career at Michigan. But it seems like his style of play is one that, you know, fits in with those guys you mentioned, you know, the Dariuses and the Bobbies and, and the uh, and the Buckners, uh, just nonstop motor approach to the game. Right. So so when the, you look at the, you know, we look mountains of tape, you know, we watch these guys, we really watch their whole season. Uh, we, you know, we dig into their background and, and Quiddy is everything we're looking for in terms of a character of men of what he brings to the table. And you can see that on his tape. Uh, he's just been outstanding so far with us uh, working with the D line coaches and, and everybody else. And, and uh, you know, some of the things that he's, you know, that you look for say, okay, well, what makes him so great? You know, what, what's to make the examples of that? Well, I would say that his attention to detail, you can tell when you ask him questions about a particular defense, he can dive into the detail that he's, he can absorb that in a quick manner and be able to give it back out to us on the practice field. And uh, that, that's been really uh, a pleasant surprise, not really a surprise, but really just a, a good thing to notice for him because he can pick up a big, big amount of scheme in, in a short amount of time. And that's going to accelerate his play and accelerate him uh, even faster. So we're excited about that. Yeah. Luce, how are you doing? Good. With uh, you say you, you you all the tape you watched on on Quiddy is like everybody. I'm sure you watched a ton of tape on Darius coming out before you guys got him. Yep. What was your, what was your impression when you when you first got your hands on him, and where is he taking his game? Yeah, so Darius, when he first came in, if you guys remember, I'm sure you guys do that. He he came in and he had a groin strain that first OTA. So he came into my individual, which is you know kind of legendary, I guess. But he came in there, and we kind of pushed him through the the, the 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 paces there, and he had a groin strain, which is fine. Then he ended up sitting out, so he really didn't get a chance to touch him until training camp. And you know, Dave Borgonzi and myself worked with him during that time uh, to cone drills, uh, alignment assignment, key technique to get him up to speed. And uh, he did a wonderful job with that, you know, picking up the scheme. And then when he came into training camp, you guys remember one of his first plays, he picked off Andrew Luck, um, you know, in that first training camp. So you could tell uh, that he was special from the beginning. Um, and the one thing that resonates with Darius, and you guys have all said this, and, and it, it's so true that the energy which he brings to the table day in and day out is unmatched. It's unparalleled. You, I mean, I've seen guys and I've had good linebackers over the years, and this guy is, is special that way. He is a special human being with, in terms of his energy, his focus, and being able to do it every day. Some guys can do it once in a while. This guy does it every single day, and that's what makes him special. Um, then he's a great athlete and a great teammate you know, to boot. So um, he's really taken his game to the next level. And really, when you think about it with the loss of Anthony Walker, this is an opportunity for Darius to, to really step up his game in terms of leadership, you know, and, and we expect Darius to be that guy and he's been that guy and he's just going to ramp it up even more. And uh, he's just going to shine in that role. So we're excited about that. Quick follow-up. You talked about he was special from the beginning with these rookies, whether it's Darius or Bahari or Blackman or now Quiddy, do you need to see something 
early on in practice or camp to say they're ready? Is there something that you see as opposed to this guy needs more time? Yeah, there's usually some some moment. You know, it's not necessarily a moment, but there's moments during the course of a early on where you look at this and say, man, this guy is special. Like, for example, I remember with Julian last year, and, you know, he had the knee issue and he was going through all that. And all of a sudden we put him in drills and I'm standing there next to Alan Williams and we, we have him side by side with the corners and we're doing the break drills and, you know, the, the movement drills that DBs do. And we were looking at each other like going, oh, my gosh, this guy is as good as a corner. He's moving as quick and as fast as a corner. And we knew right then he had that special quickness because you, know, you could see that on tape where he had the ball skills and he was a ball hawk type of guy. So and he proved that and he's going to prove that again. So. Um, we just noticed his quickness right away. And with relative to your question there, Mike, with uh, with Kari, we, you know, with Kari, what we noticed right away was his instincts, his ability to process and his ability to, to really move fast to the football. And he's, after watching last year's tape, he's one of our best guys in terms of being able to be in a low zone and be able to break on a ball when it's in the flat or in the, in the curl zone there. So he's he's special that way. And we noticed that pretty quick about him too. Thanks, good. Hey, Jack. Yeah, Jack. Hey, Matt, I'm curious as now you've had, you know, a couple of weeks here with DeForest. And what have you seen with his leadership of that group that, you know, obviously you weren't really able to see last year around this time? Yeah, I mean, he's getting to show just the man that he is. You know, he is a special person and that's why he's here. You know, uh, when you look at his career, he's done it throughout his career. And I think right now, because and just to, to your point, JJ, that you know, he didn't get a chance to really be around his teammates last year because of the whole COVID situation. And this year it's just been, you know, he's taken uh, Ben under his wing. He's he's had different guys over and working with different guys, Stolly and all those different guys that have been with him. And he's been able to be around them. So when you're a worker like that, and plus you're a guy that plays the way we like the guys to play, and he's an all pro player, he's going to have an effect on those guys. And uh, he's, he's certainly one of our leaders, you know, along with Darius. And, uh, you know, he's just uh, done a nice job so far with that. As kind of a follow-up to that, you know, Chris Ballard's talked a lot about the 17th game and, and the need to have really good depth on the defensive line. When you've got a guy like DeForest who has those leadership qualities and obviously the on-the-field skills, how does that kind of trickle down through the rest of a line and build that depth? Yeah, I think it's so important that you have, you know, you got to have guys that are pillars of your defense, right? You know, and, and, and Buckner is one of those guys. And I think that when you have that, it, for, it breeds confidence. I, I personally think that with bringing Buckner and helped out Grover Stewart, you know, for an example, you know, an example of that, because when you bring in Buckner and Grover was already moving his game up anyway, but I think that accelerated him having Buckner next to him because he saw, my gosh, this guy is a really good player. And he understands how to play the run, play the pass. He knows how to use his hands. And I think those guys just really gelled off each other. And that's, to me, is a big part of why Grover had the season he had last year, um, just because of the acquisition of Buckner. So it, it goes all the way through the group there. And, and that's that's the kind of effect he has. Charlie Clifford. Hey, Flus, thanks for the time. Hey, Charlie. I saw you yesterday at the golf course. I know. I, yeah, what's going on? What were you doing there? I don't want to blow your cover. What's the <laughs> handicap at? Because you were putting in some hours. It's a it's an official ten point nine right now, but I'm bringing it down single digits in the next couple of weeks. We round down in this in this part, so it's a ten. It's a ten. Uh, no, <laughs> okay. good to see you. The excitement around these names. When you walked in, there wasn't a ton of buzz around this defense. Where are you, Coach? Heading into this year, big picture with the pieces you have. Yeah, so we sat down. I sat down with uh, Chris Ballard yesterday, and we always do it this time of year, and we talk about what's going to go on during training camp. And we just went through you know, every position, D-line, linebackers, safeties, corners, nickels. And what we saw was competition. And we saw it throughout the whole thing. So we've never had this depth before. They've, they've done a great job of building depth here. And the competition is all the way through the depth chart, which is outstanding. And we're just look, looking for it to play out. It's just got to play out the way it should play out. And the guys will produce on the field. Those will be the guys that play. 
And it's an exciting thing because if you look at, for example, the nose tackle, well, we got Grover Stewart, but we got guys behind those. Who's going to be the backup to Grover Stewart, you know, and, and potentially, you know, push Grover Stewart. Who's going to, who's going to be that guy. So that's an example. You know, you got Stolly, you got Woods, you got, you got Chris Williams, you got all these guys right there that are going to push that spot. You know, who's going to be, you know, we know Kenny's our nickel, but who's going to be that next guy that that's going to, you know, be behind him. Who's going to be that guy, you know, is, you know, there's two or three guys at every spot like that. The corners position, that's another thing. You know, hey, uh, competition-wise, you know, we, we know we know we got Kenny, we got Zave, but who's going to be the third guy? There's 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 competition there, and to me, competition breeds you know brings out the best in people and bring it breeds excellence. So, and the guys know that there's you know there's no free lunch here. There's everything's based on what the field, uh, what you do on the field. And we are excited about where that is because that's only going to elevate the play of the, the, the entire unit is that competition. So we're certainly excited about looking at that during training camp. George Bremer. Coach, kind of building off that with the defensive end spot in particular, uh, adding the two rookies and then having some other young guys with something to prove. How much are you looking forward to the competition in training camp there? Yeah, George, that's, that's obviously bringing those two guys in. That was kind of a, you know, we're going to, we had brought a couple of guys in, you know, a few years ago, you know, Banigou, Ture, Ture's coming off the injury. Then we bring two more guys in this year. So again, that's just competition. And the reason we load up on that position is that we, you know, obviously that's a huge impact position uh, for us, for our football team. And uh, it, it's going to let, we're going to, it's going to let it play out, you know, and we're going to see where it is and, and uh, guys will just produce on the field and we'll let it go from there. Ken Sterling. Hey coach, where are you compared to other years in terms of implementation on the on the defensive side, knowing that you don't have mini camp coming up, the change in schedule? How's that affected your implementation? Yeah, so so this year uh, and every year, what we do is we look and see what we did well last year, what we're going to carry on, carry over to the next year, and then what new things we want to, you know, marinate on and and look at and be able to implement into training camp and see if those things are something that our players are good at, okay? And, and they really fit our scheme. And we've adjusted our scheme since we've been here and we're gonna continue to do that. And I think it's it's on course, Kent, I really do. I think it's, it's right on course where we want it to be. Uh, we got a chance to implement some of those new ideas uh, during these walkthrough OTAs, this kind of new thing that we did this off season. And the guys picked it up really well, and we're looking forward to getting full speed uh, reps at it and see where it goes from there. But in terms of your question, I'd say we're right on right on course where we're, we were, where we need to be. Bill Erickson. Hey, Flus. Uh, you mentioned that that third cornerback spot. Um, do you see that as an open competition beyond Zave and Kenny? I, I do. I see. I see a lot of spots as open competition. You know, so I, I really do. I see it as you know. Everybody's got to prove where they need to be. Uh, and again, when you go through a season, 17 games, you think about that, you know, I mean, you guys have seen it. You guys have covered this team in NFL for a long time. You know that a lot of guys, you got to have, and you guys have heard me say this since day one, you got to have two guys at a position and a guy behind them. So there's going to be guys that play. Every one of those guys that are up on the roster, they're going to be playing at some point. I mean, they got to show up and they got to play. So we have to get them ready to play. And that's us job as coaches and players together to be able to do that because you know with one injury there's there's guys in there that are going to play and rotate in there so yeah I would say that yes it is a competition but we need everybody to get ready to play do a couple more Jim Ayala okay hey Flus hey um, we'll stick with corners because we're talking about that now but um I feel like this is a question we've asked you a lot of times but what are you expecting out of a rock and, and what does he need to do to kind of win that that job and then the other one I'm curious about is Marvell Tell since we didn't we didn't get a chance to see him last year, obviously. So what does he look like so far? And what are you expecting out of him in, in year yeah. two or three? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so Rocky has done, done a really good job of being here. You know, he got injured last year, uh, you know, in the end part of the season uh, and, and he stayed around and got himself, you know, healthy and we like where he is. We like where he is. And, and again, he knows it's open competition and he knows where he's, what he's got to do and how he's got to do it. And, you know, uh, with Marvell tell, we didn't get a chance to see him you know, the whole year, but obviously we were in contact with him and we stayed in touch with him and, and we're pleasantly surprised where he is. You know, he's changed his body. He's been doing different things, you know, to, to work his body in a different way. And he looks really good. And uh, we had him in drills and 
moving around. So we're excited where he can be as well. So he understands where he's at uh, and we're excited about where those guys are. And now we just got to see, hey, they got to have a great off season coming into training camp and be ready to go when we get there. Right, last question here, Zach Kiefer. There's Zach. Yep. Hey, Matt, how are you doing? Hey, Zach. Sorry, I lost the mute button. Um, so we know you have pretty high standards with practice and to get on the field, you know, it's going to take earning that in practice. We saw Ta Taekwon take that step last year and really jump up and play a lot more. What has Ben Banigo have to do that's similar or that's different this year to see a lot more snaps? Yeah, so to, to, to your point, Zach, you know, you saw Taekwon last year. Um, he just really took the step. We've always talked about that third year to being able to do that. And I think that that's where Ben is. You know, Ben's going to have to do that this year. You know, he's got to do it with his play, just like Taekwon did. You know, and I, I, you know, I, I saw what Taekwon said, and I thought it was good advice. You know, just stay the course, be yourself, and, and you know, just work your tail off. And that's what Ben has to do. And, again, it's got to be done on the practice field. It's got to be done in drills because we, we study everything and we look at every single thing that every player does from the drills to the to the one on ones, to the team activities, to the to the eleven on elevens. We do all those things and and it'll all be evaluated and, and looked at from there. A little it's a it's a lot more crowded position room though now with those draft picks coming in. Yeah, I think it's great. It's it's really good. I mean, it's just it's for, for me it's really nice because you have different pieces that you can put in different spots. You know, because you know you can put Quiddy inside outside, you could put Taekwon inside outside, you could put uh, dial could be all across the line. Uh, there's there's a nice mix and match of rotation that you're going to have on first and second down as well as third down. So we were really excited about the body types and the, and the men that we have in that room.